As I make these videos, I explore new areas like this one and keep my GoPro recording because amazing events can happen fast. Here I follow foraging surgeon fish, hoping to get a nice shot. Sometimes following an animal or a group of animals leads me to the next thing. The dark silhouette. I know exactly what that is. That is a goliath grouper and I've been hoping to find one for a very long time. This is my first. The camera frame depicts my field of vision in real time. This specimen already appears to be aware of my presence. Nice and easy. Goliath grouper, also known as the Jewfish, is found in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean, and in the Atlantic it is known as far north as Massachusetts and Maine, and as far south as the southern Brazilian coastline. The Goliath grouper is also found off the coast of western Africa, from Senegal south to Congo. They are found in shallower waters less than 200 feet. This one is in retreat. Where are you going, buddy? Ah, into the middle structure. It's pretty cool behavior. That's what they do. I've spooked this specimen and uh, we'll wait around and see if it comes back out. This beast wants nothing to do with me. I may have frightened it. I go to the back and wait. Hopefully it will come out again and let me see it. Here's a rundown on the classification. I try to make as little movement as possible with the interest of concealing my presence. Hopefully the group feels safe and comes back out. While we're waiting to see if the grouper comes back out, let me tell you about a different species of goliath grouper that resides in the eastern Pacific on the west coast of the Americas. The Pacific goliath grouper is Epinephilus quinquefaciatus. The Atlantic Goliath grouper is Epinephilus etajara. They are similar, but different. I continue to wait and my battery is reading low. I will switch off for now and click it back on later if I see the grouper. grouper comes out, but retreats almost immediately as I go in for a closer look. Goliath groupers make a loud booming noise when they are startled. My GoPro camera microphone picks the sound up. The grouper's body twitches as it makes a sound. There, that boom is loud and you can feel it throughout your body. I was so fascinated by the interaction with the Goliath grouper, I venture out two days later to see if I can gather more footage of this awesome animal. That boom they do is fascinating to experience. It's somewhat of a journey to the spot. Ghostly five to six foot barracuda descend from the shadows of the ship's hull to take a closer look at me passing by.
A curious jack that snaps someone's line swims by towing a leader. And then there's these dudes. It seems clear that these tarpon are very curious about my presence. Each one of those fish has a hundred pounds on it. Jack is fascinated with me. It'll come by a few more times before this dive was over. We're here. This is the spot. Where is it? Fishermen discard their clean catches at the dock. The fish underneath will take care of the rest. The sound of the boat in the evening is their dinner bell. The story is similar to Pavlov's dog. There it is. So 
how and why does the Goliath Grouper make this sound? How loud is it? The Goliath Grouper has a specialized muscle. Ichthyologists have referred to as a sonic muscle, which is connected from the vertebrae to the swim bladder. The sonic muscle contracts above the swim bladder in a special way, creating an acoustic thumping pulse sound that projects a spherical shock wave outward from the grouper. The acoustic pulse can be felt throughout your body and it's a stunning sensation to experience. This pulse is described by some as a bark, others have called it a sonic boom. How loud is it? I don't know, but to elaborate further as I sit in awe of this animal, my thought was that of someone playing some funk on the bass and I could feel the rhythm in my chest. Ichthyologists have recorded pulses at 60 Hz. These, these recordings though do not take into account the measure of distance between the subject and the recorder or background noise which negates the measurement to some degree but the findings are still fascinating nonetheless. So why do they do it? Here with me in this setting, the grouper is giving me a warning. Goliath groupers have been known to attack divers, so note I give it space and my respect. This one is twice my size. They also call to each other during breeding season. Goliath groupers have areas that they meet for spawning and they will return to these areas. As, at these spawning sites, Goliath groupers will call to each other as if to be communicating. Ichthyologists have found that the calls are recorded in higher frequency at these aggregation areas at night. Scientists have also found that the, that the spawning occurs at night. But why? Plankton feeders are often feeders that hunt by sight. Spawning at night, especially dark nights, could be a species adaptation to minimize predatory impact on the reproductive output. A couple of notable predators on their eggs would be the round herring, the round scad, and others. Calling to each other is likely to assist the goliath grouper in its breeding efforts.